the word panetics is de derived by our founder, Ralph Sue, from the Pali word meaning to inflict. And it was Ralph Sue's idea to identify who inflicts suffering on whom as a way to eventually alleviate it. He suggested that a unit of measure for the intensity of suffering be called the dukkha, again a Pali word meaning to suffer. Uh, and he chose Pali because Ralph thought it's appropriate that we use the language of the Buddha. Uh, the International Society for Panetics was uh, founded in uh, 1991 and is based, first of all, I think, on, on Ralph Sue's concepts, which he put together in uh, 1988 called Panetics, the study of the infliction of suffering in which he tried to have a quantitative numerical scale to measure the infliction of suffering. And what he wanted to do was to show, for example, that if you add time and number, that a low level of suffering can in fact be cumulatively more damaging than an intense level of suffering. And that, for example, corporate executives who pollute a little bit into a stream which affects millions of people have a larger infliction of dukkhas or suffering than someone who might kill somebody when his car runs out of control. And he, he's, he was trying, in other words, to make suffering and the infliction comparative as a way of identifying things. Uh, society would like to present uh, Glenn with the SIU Humanitarian Award in recognition of your remarkable endeavors to reduce the suffering of human beings around the world and your continuing efforts to guide others. And I might add to inspire the board. Uh, we are greatly in your debt, Glenn. And also, <laughs> Congratulations, Glenn. Speechlessness. Does say that the history of mankind and its future, perhaps, hangs on three little things. Three very little things. One is the fissionable atom. One is the transmissible microbe. And one is the fertilized ovum. And of these three, it seems, each as the T-34 tank that David Jones spoke of this morning is mindless. It's an effective and efficient killing machine and doesn't know which side it's on. What it seems is that these three things at present, at the very least, have not done in humanity and perhaps because they are possibly under humanitarian control. Doesn't that give hope? And that's what we're going to speak of, hope and how it's transmissible. Far more transmissible than that virus everyone here knows about is this freely transplantable subject called hope.